Hey guys, welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're new here. Today's video is going to be so much fun. I am so excited for it. I am filming a 12 hour readathon. So I know the typical format for this type of vlog or readathon is 24 hour readathon, but I have never done one of those and I feel like I want to start out easy and just do 12 hours. I was thinking about it and I could have done 24 hours straight through. You know, some people do 7 a.m. one morning to 7 a.m. the next morning. They read through the night and that's 24 hours. But that is just not something that's going to work for me because I value my sleep. I need eight hours a night and I'm just not like willing to mess up my sleep schedule for the sake of this video. So that option was not something I was gonna do, but then I thought maybe I could do 12 hours one day, 12 hours the next day. That is definitely possible, and I feel like maybe eventually I will do that, but I just didn't feel like blocking off two whole days to read. I already blocked off one day, which is today. I feel comfortable with that. I planned my work schedule around this week so that I could do that, but I don't know, two days just seemed excessive. So I landed on doing a 12 hour readathon instead of a 24 hour one, and I think it'll be really fun. And then I also have two ideas for how I could do the 12 hours. So it's currently 8.57, so I'll probably start sometime like 9.05, 9.15, something like that. But I either can do 9.15 this morning to 9.15 at night and just, it is that strict 12 hours, see how much I can read within like taking breaks. So, you know, showering, eating, maybe taking a walk, something like that. But I will just count it as 12 hours, however much reading I can fit into it. Or my other thought is that I could start like a stopwatch of sorts and only keep the stopwatch going when I'm physically reading. So I can see how much I'm reading when I'm literally reading for 12 hours straight. I think what I'm gonna do is start the stopwatch when I start this whole thing and then decide as I go which way I wanna do it. So yeah, I'll see how it's going and then decide. Okay, so now let's get into the book options for what I'm thinking about reading during this 12 hours. I feel like I have to be very strategic and the books that I choose are gonna like play a huge role in how successful I will be. I need to pick books that I like won't want to put down, you know, books that keep me engaged, keep me interested. I just can read, read, read. And you know, that's not every type of book, but I do have one book that I know I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with One of Us is Dead by Geneva Rose. So I'm pretty sure this is like a mystery thriller and thrillers are my easiest type of book to read. Like I fly through them, they hook me in the most and you know, I'm just dying to know what happens, how it all ends. So I really read them fast. So this is going to be my number one book that I'm going to start with. And I'm really excited for this. I picked this up last weekend at Barnes and Noble. And honestly, I got it because the cover really intrigued me. Like it really caught my eye. I've definitely seen this book around, but I haven't heard too many people talk about it or I haven't seen too many people read it. So I don't really know what to expect, but I'm excited for it. And after that is where things are going to get a little bit more tricky. I have like multiple directions I could go in. First, I could read a book off of my April TBR, but you know, honestly, all those books don't seem very bingeable to me, so I don't know if I will, but I do have two options that I think could work. Number one is The Queen of Nothing. This is a YA fantasy book, and I would read this because it's YA, which means it'll be like easy, digestible, all that stuff. But I feel like I probably won't reach for this. I'm thinking that if any book I choose off of my April TBR, it will be this. Um, the personal librarian and I know some people might be like you're crazy for choosing an historical fiction during a readathon Sometimes if a historical fiction is fascinating and so interesting It gets me hooked in way more than other types of books like I can really really binge these So I might give this one a go and see if it's interesting Then I could choose a book that's not on my April TBR and for those I have three options that I'm thinking about as well Butcher and Blackbird. I feel like this will be like a fun, easy rom-com. I could get through it fast. We also have Behind the Net, which I think would be pretty similar, you know, easy, fluffy, fun rom-com again, I think, sports romance. But this one's actually kind of long, so I don't know. And then the reason why I have this one, Everything I Know About Love, is because it's short and the uh, font is really big. I don't know if you can tell, but like that would be kind of easy to read. Also, I could disperse this throughout other books if I'm getting bored because it's like nonfiction. I feel like this is a good book to read in chunks. And then the last book that is on my radar for today is Daisy Hates. So I actually read Magnolia Parks a few months ago and I liked it, but I didn't like super love it and I didn't really want to read the next book right away. But recently I've been listening to this book as an audiobook and it definitely like hooked me back into the world. And so after I listened to it a little bit on Audible, I also read some of this. I'm about like page 
170 and I read a lot of it last night But I was finding that it doesn't really hold my attention like I'm liking the story But unfortunately it is a book that I find myself wanting to take breaks from I think it's because it's not too plot heavy It's really you're just spending time with the character so like some so at some points it's like enough is enough like I need to take a break from them I'm a little tired of reading the same thing over and over again Although I really do I am really liking it. I'm finding it interesting, but it's just not a book I can like binge so this is not gonna be a priority in this readathon but I may read some of it because I am in the middle of it. So those are all of the books and I'm thinking if I could predict how much I'll be able to read, I think I'll get like two-ish books done. I think I'll be able to fully read two books if they're around 300 pages, which a lot of these are. So that is my prediction. Maybe I'll get to like two and a half, but definitely two. And I think that's gonna be my goal to finish two books. So mark my words, we will check back in and see how I do. And it's 9.04 right now, so honestly, I think I will just get this readathon going and start the stopwatch as soon as it hits 9.05, because why not? I'll also keep you guys updated on which method I choose to do, whether it's the stopwatch or just 12 hours straight. Okay, it is 9.05 now, and we have started the stopwatch. Okay, it is now like 10:30, and I have read quite a bit of this. I'm very proud of myself. I think I'm on, I'm on page 105, and I am really loving this so far. And I am flying through it. It is, it's really good. And pretty much, we were following this group of four like middle-aged, kind of 30s to 40s women in this rich town called Buckhead, I think it's called, in Atlanta. And it's this very wealthy city and they all have rich husbands. They live like classic rich lives. And there are four women, their names are Karen, Jenny, Olivia, and Crystal. And there's one other, Shannon. And there is a bunch of drama between them all. There's divorce, there's betrayal, they're all lying to each other, like they're friends with each other, but then they're talking shit behind each other's back. There's just classic rich person drama and antics and everything with the husbands and with each other. And I'm very into it so far. It's really easy to read, very fast paced. There's also a murder that has gone on and most of the book is taking place in the past with the drama with all the women. But there's also a little bit of present day where Jenny is being interviewed by a cop and pretty much it's hinting at the murder and you don't know who was murdered, but you're assuming it was one of the women by one of the women. And I'm assuming we'll find that out, but that is the central mystery. And yeah, that's about it. Also, Jenny is a hairdresser or she's a beautician. Like she does it all, hairdressing, nails, waxing, face, skin, makeup, she does it all and she owns a salon and all of the women go to that salon and they talk about everything. So Jenny is well versed in all of the drama. She's kind of like the overseer of everything. Like she knows everything that's going on between everyone. So, so far so good. Some of the women are awful to read about. Olivia is such a nasty person. I'm really liking Karen and Jenny the most, I think. So yeah, that is my update. I will check back in with you guys later. Okay, it is just past two o'clock. I have been actively reading for a little over four hours. So it's been five hours, but actively reading for a little over four hours. And I just finished my first book, One of Us is Dead. And this was really, really good. I was thoroughly entertained the entire time. It was super fun, super fast, um, just a very easy, quick book to read and it was really good the ending i don't know if i would say it shocked me like it was a little bit twisty i would say it was a good ending like maybe i would have wanted a little bit more from like a thriller mystery but i didn't like think i was gonna get that so the end did deliver for me it wasn't the best but it was still good
the way I would describe this book is like, well, actually, I've never really watched The Real Housewives, but I feel like these women are like The Real Housewives. They are so nuts. And then there also is, you know, the murder woven in. So it's not, so it's a little more serious and crazy than The Real Housewives. But I feel like that is the energy it gives. It was full of drama and gossip and mean girls and everyone being fake. And I will say there was a layer woven in towards like the latter third of this book that was a little, you know, of a stretch in my opinion and made things seem a little unrealistic. I would definitely say this is like an unrealistic mystery thriller type of book. I don't even know if that's the correct genre. It's like not super thrilling. There's like a little bit of a mystery, um, but that is the overall vibe. It just seemed a little bit unrealistic and ridiculous. So I'm thinking my rating is gonna be like a three, seven, five. It would be a four based on like pure enjoyment. I had so much fun reading this, flew through it so quick, but I just feel like it was a little silly, but still a lot of fun. So my next move is I think going to be to start this book. I'll give it a shot and I'll see if I'm like hooked and interested. If I'm not within like the first 50 pages ish, I'll probably have to stop it and start something else because we got to keep the reading momentum going. But I think I'm going to start this. Um, before I start this, I am going to take a little bit of a reading break and make some lunch, but then I will get right back into it. And so far I'm having lots of fun with this little readathon. So I unfortunately just realized that I lost track of the like active reading time because I've been reading for like an hour now and I haven't played it or started it since I finished lunch. So I think I'll just ditch that and just end at like 9.05, which is exactly 12 hours from when I started. But back to the book. So I'm reading The Personal Librarian and I am 50 pages in and I am very much liking it so far. It's very interesting. So I think I'll continue to read this. It is like a little bit slower of a read, a lot slower of a read. It's historical fiction and it's, I would say dense maybe is the right word. It's just, I have to slow down, read some things over, like really, you know, use my brain power, which I'm not mad about. Like I said, the past book, the previous book was a little silly. So it kind of feels nice to read something a bit more intellectual. But I knew what this book was about in the back of my brain, but I think I forgot about it because it's been on my shelf for so long. But essentially we are following the personal librarian or the personal librarian to JP Morgan. So she like um, takes care of his personal library. He collects a bunch of old pieces of art and literature and manuscripts and all that kind of stuff. But what is actually really interesting about this story, which I forgot was part of it, is that the girl, the woman, her name is Belle, is a black woman who passes as a white woman. So her entire family, they are light-skinned, very pale, so they can pass as white. And their entire lives, they've been pretending to be white, which I just think is very interesting. It takes place in the 1900s, so it is a time that is full of racism and civil rights movements and all that stuff. So it's a big you know, problem at the moment. And I'll just read this little blurb. It says, the remarkable story of J.P. Morgan's personal librarian, Belle de Costa Green, the black American woman who was forced to hide her true identity and pass as white to leave a lasting legacy that enriched our nation. And I can already tell from where the book is going, but also just the description of the book that J.P. Morgan's, that working for J.P. Morgan brings more attention to Belle. And she's kind of brought up into a society or I think she will be brought up into a society that she's never been a part of and it's maybe she'll be more scrutinized. That is what I'm thinking. And I think it's going to be harder for her to keep her false identity. I just finished a chapter and it said, I will have to tread carefully as I enter the home of one of the richest families in America. Enemies can be especially dangerous for a colored girl named Belle Marion Greener as she crosses the threshold into the wider white world as Belle DaCosta Green. So. I feel like it's gonna be super interesting. I'm very excited. Um, I don't know how many pages this is. It looks like it's like just over 300. So what time is it now? It is 3.32. Can you see that? I don't know. 
just over 3.32, which means I have five and a half hours left. Five and a half hours left, I think I can do it. I think I can finish this one. I'll probably just finish two books today, but yeah, I think I can do it. Okay, it is like 5.15 now, and I think I've read as much of this as I can. Um, I'm on page 140, so I read like almost 90 more pages or 90 more pages and it's good. I just feel like it could be, it's getting a bit of a bore and like kind of like I'm forcing myself to read it and I don't want that to like make my opinion too negative on this book because I am enjoying it but I've just been reading for like hours today so it's just pretty much I don't want to keep reading this and then like have a sour taste in my mind about it because I'm liking it. It's just, you know, it's it's not a book that's meant to be finished in less than six hours you know so i think i'm gonna take a pause on this so far pretty much bell our personal librarian our main character is pretty much just moving up in the ranks becoming more and more renowned for being the personal librarian she's winning all these auctions she's getting all these artifacts and cool historical things and she's also working through how being a woman affects her place in her new job in her career and also the fact that her skin is a little olive toned darker and the fact that she's hiding her true identity through all this and then how it's becoming possibly increasingly harder to hide her identity or not harder to but more dangerous like as she becomes more well known and more like important like the consequences could be more severe so that's currently what's going on in this book and i think i'm going to keep reading daisy hates just because i'm in the middle of this book and i don't want to start another book and then be in the middle of three so this is what i'm going to continue to read i feel like it'll be a good switch up i need to get some you know fun drama in my life this is a little bit serious and this book has actually been making me like chuckle out loud so i feel like this will be good for right now because i'm i'm hitting a little bit of a wall so I have about two hours ish plus a little extra left to read and I think I've made it like 60 pages in this book I'm really liking it I know most people know this series but I just thought I'd explain it in case you don't so this is the second book in the Magnolia Parks universe so there's Magnolia Parks and there's Daisy Hates and there's two books or there's three books for Magnolia and two books for Daisy out so far and they kind of revolve around the same big group of London elite like young adults rich kind of like gossip girl in London and the books are I would say they are romances but they're not like your classic romance they're toxic romances there's a lot of drama and scandal and cheating and lies and all of that but they are beautifully written books and I think they are interesting stories and the first one the magnolia parks book i did like but something in it like didn't make me excited to read this so i didn't know if i would love this going into it but i am loving it so much i think i'm definitely more of a daisy hates girl than a magnolia parks girl so far i am loving the romance in here and the couple in here they are giving me butterflies i think christian is so hot he's my favorite in the whole universe so far my favorite man um and yeah i'm just really loving this i'll probably talk more about it at the end i think i could maybe finish it tonight i think i might just make myself even if i go past the nine o'clock mark honestly because i just think i could but i think this will be my last check-in for now and i'm just gonna read for the next two hours try and go straight through with no check-ins no distractions and just try and get this book done <laughs> it is officially 10.03 let's just say it's 10.05 which means it's been 13 hours of my readathon and I just finished Daisy Hates I really really loved this it's definitely like I I can't decide my rating yet because 
it's late and I can't think too hard on it, but it's definitely like a four or above. I really liked it. Um, I think an aspect of it that I really enjoyed was Daisy Hates, like the Hates family, her brother Julian, and just her whole family in general. They are like the most powerful crime family in all of England, something like that. It gives me mafia vibes. And I love mafia books, mafia romance books. So, so this book had a bit of that to it, like the crime and the action and like everyone protecting her because she's this like mafia princess who needs protecting. So I loved that energy. Like I said before, I also loved the couple in this. I am realizing though that Magnolia Parks and Daisy Hates, like the two books, they are very similar in the fact that there's these like massive love triangles going on. And then in both books, it's even bigger than a love triangle. It's like a love rectangle. Maybe there's like even six people involved. I didn't really think that was going to happen in here, but it did. The other thing that I'm taking away is that these couples in both books, they just can't get their shit together. Like nothing ever works out. You feel like it's going to work out and then it doesn't. But all in all, I definitely liked this journey more. I think it is a mix of the things, me just liking the couple more. You see this couple go from more of just like hooking up to falling in love to being in love. Like you see the whole romantic journey where you don't get that in the first book. So I think I enjoyed that more. I think I just like both of the characters more. And like I said, that other plot of the crime was really fun. And I also think that Magnolia Parks is written more like poetically and lyrically. Like I just think it's more about the quotes and these big ideas about love. And this one is more about plot. Like this one seemed like it had a bit more to it. Both are very character driven and it's a lot of like conversations between characters and there's like a lot of quotes in here, like a lot of speaking between characters. But overall I would say that this is more of a plot. I think. I'm happy I got back into the series. I feel like I'm finally at the place where people love Magnolia Park series. I don't love, love, love it as much as I know some people do, but I'm on my way. I don't think I will ever get to loving it as much as others, but I can kind of finally see it. I can see the hype and I'm excited for the next three books. So that's exciting. And just to review what I accomplished today, I finished this entire book, One of Us is Dead, and it was, how many pages was it? This was 351 pages, and then I read 140 pages of The Personal Librarian. So what am I at? I'm at like 490 pages. And then I read from page 170 to 170 to 410. That's a lot. I read a lot of that. 170 to 410. What is that math? 30. I think that's 230 pages. 230 pages plus 400 90 pages is 720? 720 pages is what I'm going with. Also, I feel like reading half of these, I can consider it one whole book. So I would say I read two books, kind of, today, and it was definitely a success. Also, clearly I stopped the stopwatch because I lost track, like I said, so I don't know how much active reading I did, but I've been pretty much reading all day, and I can definitely say that it is kind of hard. Like, like it's enjoyable, but definitely kind of hard to just read all day long. I think I kind of went a little bit wrong with choosing this book. It's just not super bingeable. Like, I think I probably could have read more if I stuck with more of the bingeable books, so that is a note for next time. Also, I do not know how people do this for double the time, 24 hours, like, I cannot imagine waking up tomorrow and doing this all over again. Like, I kind of wanna go back to work and like, do other things besides reading, which, kind of crazy, but I did enjoy myself. I'll probably do this again sometime. So yeah, that is that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I had so much fun today filming it. Don't forget to subscribe for more book content, and I'll see you in the next one.